Hi, I'm Michelle Begay with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. What Latin American country just won the Guinness World Record for biggest orchestra? We'll have the answer later. So we start this week with the elections in Chile. This weekend, Chileans voted in the first round of presidential elections. The hard right former congressman, Jose Antonio Cast, finished in the top spot. He was followed by leftist lawmaker and former protest leader, Gabriel Boric. The results mean the runoff election will be pulling voters in polar opposite directions. And let's quickly check in with my colleague, Joel Richards, who has more from Chile. Chile has entered the final straight of the presidential elections as we now await a second round runoff in December. José Antonio Cast and Gabriel Boric are two candidates from outside the traditional centre-left or centre-right coalitions that have governed Chile since the return to democracy in 1990. Now, they both offer very different visions and very different proposals for the country long seen as South America's economic success story. Now, this year's elections take place in the context of the social unrest that erupted in October 2019. Those protests were rooted in a sense of inequality and questioned that image of the Chilean economic success. So, on a platform of broadening social and economic rights, leftist Gabriel Boric stood out in the presidential elections. But at the same time, there's a growing feeling amongst Chileans that they want an end to the protests. They want stability, and that has seen ultra-conservative José Antonio Cast's hard line on law and order, as well as on immigration, find support. There are many takeaways from the first round of voting, but here are just two. One, we saw a fractured vote. No candidate took more than 30% of the vote in the first round. Second is the low voter turnout, less than 50% of Chileans voted. So both Cast and Boric will seek to broaden their appeal to more centrist voters, but also appeal to those who did not vote in time for the second round on December the 19th. There were also regional elections this weekend in Venezuela. Only 40% of the country's registered voters participated. Experts say Chavismo confirmed it's still in control and the opposition is in the middle of a crisis. The president of the National Electoral Council said of the 23 government posts up for grabs, the ruling party won 20. The opposition only won three. And this weekend, the president of Colombia, Iván Duque, visited his Ecuadorian counterpart, President Guillermo Lasso. The visit comes at a delicate time for Ecuador, as it faces a huge crisis due to growing drug gang violence. The Ecuadorian president thanked Duque and expressed his intention to take advantage of all the experience Colombia has garnered in the fight against armed groups and narco-trafficking. In addition, Ecuador and Colombia announced the reopening of their borders beginning December 1st. And check out this video from Mexico of an 11-year-old tattoo artist. Brandon Burgos is following in his father's footsteps. And while he's only a schoolboy, he has around 30 creations to his name. Important to note that his father only allows him to tattoo if he gets good grades in school. Okay, now let's look at what stories we're following for next week. First, the president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, announced the country will build the world's first Bitcoin city. The city will be built at the base of the Conchagua volcano. Cryptocurrency will be used to fund the project. Bukele says everything will be devoted to Bitcoin, residential areas, services, museums, railways, and the airport. He did not provide specific dates for when the new metropolis would be completed, but he estimates that public infrastructure would cost around 300,000 Bitcoins. The announcement was made at the Latin American Bitcoin and Blockchain Conference. And second, Honduras' presidential elections are this weekend and the candidates are closing their campaigns. Opposition parties united last minute around former First Lady Xiomara Castro. And so far, she is leading against President Juan Orlando Hernandez's candidate, Nazri Aspura. And now the answer to the news trivia. The correct response is C. Venezuela's national system of youth and children's orchestras, known in Venezuela as El Sistema, has set the new Guinness record for the world's largest orchestra. 8,573 musicians played beautifully together for more than five minutes. The piece they played was La Marche Slav by Peter Tchaikovsky. The earlier record had been set by an orchestra in Russia, compromised of just under 8,100 musicians. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.